Welcome back to Sports Legends of the Carolinas, and thank you for subscribing. I'm your host, Scott Fowler, and on this podcast, we speak with some of my favorite sports icons from the region I've covered for almost 30 years. Jay Monahan said, you are going to be President's Cup captain, and you're going to do it in Charlotte. For this episode of Sports Legends of the Carolinas, I'm thrilled to have golfer Davis Love III, a major champion and a 21-time winner on the PGA Tour, Love was inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame in 2017. This time, perfect balance. Great golf shot. Davis. I said to all of them, I just got off the phone with the commissioner. And down the road, that might mean that you don't ever get to play in the PGA Tour again. You are either going to be suspended or banned for life. Do you understand this decision that you're making? Thanks again for supporting this work. Here's the rest of our conversation. The President's Cup is one of the PGA Tour's real tentpole events. I mean, a, an enormous deal for for Charlotte, of course, this year, but wherever it's played. Uh, but this year, it's it's uh, amid the backdrop of, of some serious turmoil in the world of golf. So let's start with how live golf, in your opinion, that that shadow will affect this President's Cup. Well, first of all, it... it it knocks out a bunch of players to play. Um, so that's disappointing. Um, but that is the President's Cup is just one tournament on the PGA Tour that these guys have, are taking a chance on never getting to play again. So that's um, both heart-wrenching, disappointing, and sometimes <laughs> infuriating that you have we're having to deal with this. That the story of going into the FedEx Cup playoffs and during the FedEx Cup playoffs was – who's here and who's not here. There was a court case before they could go play. Um, that's that's just very sad for the game. For Trevor Immelman's team, it's a lot bigger losses for him. Obviously, he took a big hit from top to bottom. Um, we lost potential players. Dustin was way down the list. Taylor Gooch was ninth when um, when the, the Live Tour started playing. So he, he had a chance to make the team. Um, but... What I keep saying, our first 12 is really good. And our second 12 is really good. Yeah. <laughs> They're just different names. And then our third 12 is really good. And if we have to go past that, we still have really good players. Um, Trevor's problem is his first 12 was really good. And his second 12 was maybe not quite as good. And his third 12, he starts to fall off. Um, so that's always been their problem an international team we've always we always had the depth and if we got going really well it was hard to beat our top 12 um the last two presence cups they have played much much better um they've become a lot more organized you know they really had us on the ropes in australia in 2019 um they seems like the farther away game we get <laughs> the better they they do uh-huh. um they've australia twice and south africa have been their their best so we have the home field advantage in charlotte for sure um but trevor and i both have come to the realization that this president's cup is going to mean something a little bit more it means that we're going to have 24 guys there that really do want to be on the pga tour and they really do want to play for their country and Mackenzie Hughes won our RSM Classic. Um, he's a really good player that we know he's a great player, but maybe the rest of the world doesn't know he's a great player. They're going to have, and it happens a lot in the Ryder Cups, is that some player you really don't know comes in and he's fired up and he gets on a roll, and next thing you know, he's beaten the top players in the U.S. So I, I expect that we're going to have we're going to have a match on our hands of guys that are um, proud. Guys are excited to be on Trevor's team. We have the same on our team. We have, you know, um, we don't look like we have much hole in our lineup, but you certainly miss our kind of our um, our hero. Dustin Johnson was kind of a leader of the team. Um, we'll miss him um, in the team room on the golf course. You know, Colin Morikawa had a really good partner, but it only lasted one year. So now we gotta, we're going to have to reboot for Colin. Um, but – once we start Thursday, that'll hopefully all fade into the background and it'll be great matches. And that's what we're going to have to focus our team on is, hey, the buildup and the noise, as Belichick says, we're just going to have to ignore the noise until we go tee off. Right. Once Thursday begins, it'll probably be about the golf. But you're right. I think the lead up 
has to, a lot of it is going to be about live golf. I listened to one interview that you, you did, and you mentioned that you had had a discussion uh, uh, with Dustin Johnson among others. Uh, and he was pretty forthright as to why he left. Right. Is, is am I correct? Yeah, no, I, correct? before London, yeah. I talked to, to Dustin. He's yeah. num- number one guy on my, on my list. And then Taylor Gooch second, cause he was ninth in points and a local resident at Sea Island, Hudson Swafford. Like, do you guys understand the ramifications of this? And they know who I am as a person. They know where my heart is and that I'm, I'm not against them as people, um, as human beings. Um, but they also know where I stand for the PGA tour. And I just wanted to make them understand that the commissioner, <laughs> I've said to all of them, I just got off the phone with the commissioner. So I make sure that I explain this to you it's correctly. Yes. And you are either going to be suspended or banned for life. And that means you're not going to play in the President's Cup. I really don't want you taking the risk. And down the road, that might mean that you don't ever get to play in the PGA Tour again. Do you understand this decision that you're making? And Dustin was very honest. Um, And Dustin has been my best um, teammate and player on teams of assistant captain and captain. I I missed four holes of his Ryder Cup last year, and he lost two of them. (laughs) And he still afterwards go, come on, Cap, why did you you let us down? I go, well, you were four up. Why? I didn't need to walk those three three or four holes. I cut the corner. But I have a lot of respect for the things he did for Team USA for so many years. Um, He he catches a little bit of grief about not, you know, maybe not trying or not caring or not – not being smart enough. He's, he's the most committed guy we had on the team. He would do anything we asked him to do. He did not act like a superstar one time. So that conversation was hard, but he said, I understand all that. And, um, I made a, I made a financial decision and a business decision. I thought about it long and hard and you have to respect the guy that tells you that. I said, look, Dustin, I don't agree but if that's your decision, that's what you want to do. Just make sure that I get invited to go fishing. And he said, <laughs> you got it, Cap. We're, we're going fishing. But the guys that lie to you or tell you that they're right and the tour is wrong, I, I have a problem with. And I, I don't think I'll ever get over that. Now, if any of those whatever 18 guys ever say, we want to come back, will you help me? I'm the first one to go to bat for him to try to make it work out. I believe in grace and forgiveness, but for now it's a fight. Unfortunately, the, uh, you have characterized it, I think as a, a, an attempted hostile takeover of the PGA tour. Can you sort of explain what that means? Well, because in 1994 we were playing in the shark shootout in November, um, maybe of 93 and, out of the blue, Greg Norman announces this plan for this world tour of the top 30 players, and he has Fox Network behind him for $25 million or something like that. And then it became the same thing as happening now, a fight amongst the players, um, the commissioner trying to say this is not going to work, it's against, against our rules, it's not the best interest. And the only way it ended was on a meeting in Arnold Palmer's office during the bail term, and Arnie shut it down. So I, I, um, I got, I got drug into it. And, um, as a five-time board member, of the PGA tour, um, which is 19 years in the boardroom. And so i I'm in the middle of it, in the midst of it. And, um, I, I wish I wasn't, I wish we weren't there, but, um, it's, it just becomes more and more disappointing that we're not doing what I think Arnie would want us to do. He was able to shut it down on sheer force of personality, really? Or I well, mean, just uh, the respect he, that he engendered? Uh, obviously, he's a great friend to all the, the, the tour, but especially was friends with Tim Fincham. And Tim said, you know, what are we going to do here? And so the strategy that Greg Norman had was that the top players would, would go and do this, and then they'd be allowed to do whatever they wanted otherwise. And Arnie said, no, Jack and I, helped form the PGA tour. We could have taken ownership in it. We could have set it up for just the top players, but that's not the right thing to do. The right thing to do is what has happened. We've grown into a tour that everybody has an opportunity. And he, at the time he was running a PGA tour event out of his Bay Hill club. 
giving money. He and Jack basically built hospitals out of their golf tournaments. Mm. Um, they did. They gave back more than they took. And that's what Arnie was saying. This is what it's all about. The, the world tour or the now the live tour model is not giving back. They want all the tours in the in CAA to feed them amateur golf, to feed them stars for their little select league. And that's the, their first priority. So that's why they can't, they don't want to, um, the tour doesn't want to coexist. They, they want them to be the number one league, which is a, a great goal, but it's, it's not, it's not going to be good for the game. If the PGA tour and the DP world tour are relegated to feeder tours to um, the live golf tour. Almost like the AAA and model or something to go to the, that's the yeah, majors. Or they're something. welcome. They're welcome to go play these events. You know, obviously it would have worked out better for them um, and legally better for them if they played, you know, two in Australia and two in Asia and a bunch of tournaments, um, you know, in the Middle East and not tried to come to America. But why did Greg Norman and Roy McElroy and all these people come to the PGA Tour, a lot of them move to the United States and base out of here because it's the best tour. It's the, it's the biggest tour. It's where the most money is on the PGA tour. Um, worldwide, our influence spreads money sponsors all around the world. So that's where Greg Norman wanted to play and where Roy McElroy and, um, a lot of great players, Sergio Garcia, you know, lives mostly here in the United States, um, for that reason. Um, in the, in the system that Jack and Arnie set up and that the World Golf Organizations have grown, it actually works. Roy McElroy is a member of the DP World Tour. It's his home tour. And he wins the FedEx every other year. Yeah, right. <laughs> because he, he follows the rules of the DP Tour and he follows the rules of the PGA Tour to be a member. And conversely, Billy Horschel, who's won the FedEx Cup, he's a member of the European Tour. And he goes over right before the President's Cup and plays at Wentworth because he likes it. It's fun. And he's a member of two tours, but he doesn't tell the DP world tour. I'm Billy Horschel, PGA tour member. I'm going to come over here whenever I want and not abide by your rules. And he doesn't tell the PGA tour. I'm going to go over there and play without a release. He makes it work within the system. And Roy has done an unbelievable job. And Gary player would tell you the same thing. He goes, yeah, I fit into the system and I played all around the world and I made a lot of money. And to think that that some group can say, no, 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 this is how it's going to work because we have a trillion dollars behind us. Let us show you how this is going to work. And that's why that's why it's a fight. And um, that's why it's going to be in courts for a, a long time until somebody, till cooler heads prevail and say, no, it's not a monopoly. Look at Rory. Look at Billy Horschel. Look at how much the tour has grown in the last 30 years. It's not a monopoly. It's a, just a great business model. And I saw on the No Laying Up podcast, they had a guy on, he said, when they get to the court case and there's 12 jurors, they're going to see a bunch of rich athletes and the Saudi government suing an American nonprofit. It just yeah. doesn't look good. It does. It's not a great look. <laughs> but, and you, it's hard to understand antitrust law and it's hard to understand sports leagues. But we are a, a, a league that I sign up at the beginning of the year. I pay my dues and then I get handed a rule book and you have to play 15 if you want to be a member and vote and be a member next year. And then I get all my free stuff. I get the benefits. I get insurance. I get to participate in the retirement plan. As long as I don't have to play, the tour has 40 something golf tournaments. I only have to play 15. Mm. It's, it's not very restrictive and you get to play for a lot of money. So um, it's unfortunate that that is part of this season the FedEx Cup playoffs were as exciting as you can get. You know, one guy come from behind and play great, and one guy that played great all year have his, have his worst nine holes maybe of the year, and it cost him a lot of money in a FedEx title, and it it just proved that Roy McIlroy is one of the best players in the world and can rise to any occasion. And Tony Finau won two in a row, and um, JT Poston won an event, and um, Tom Kim won his first tournament, and – it was such a great last six or eight weeks, but what was the main story? It, it always came back to live. And um, so hopefully <laughs> Trevor and I can somehow um, get this team in a little room <laughs> 
and in a box and get them ready to play because the fans in Charlotte aren't wanting to talk about live golf. They're going to want to see Great a, good, a good battle yeah. um, on the green mile. Does it bother you more where the money's coming from, that this is blood money basically from the Saudi government? Or does it bother you more that it's basically a threat to sort of the PGA Tour way of life? Well, the, the threat, you know, and, and again, I've, we've seen this before. It wasn't as much money, but the threat is the, is the big problem. Um, and Trevor Elman explained it to me very well. He said the rest of the world really doesn't have as much a problem with the Saudis as we, the U- United States does. And, the, and I guess for, for good reason. But I, I'm not speaking out against the Saudis or their investment fund. I'm speaking out against an organization, a golf organization that's trying to tear down um, the PGA Tour tradition and the the honored traditions of the game of golf. So I'm taking some shots at Greg Norman because this is his second go around at it. And obviously um, he he has the, the, the will and now the means, like Jay Monahan said, if this is a war, of dollars, we don't have a chance. Um, but if it's history and legacy and tradition and the right values, then we should lead. I keep saying if Elon Musk decided he wanted to do it or Amazon decided they wanted to do it, it would be the same threat. Yes. Um, they have a pile of money behind them and they could, they could try this same thing as well. But what does that do to John Deere Classics and the RBC Canadian Open and the FedEx Cup if we can't produce the best players? Our business will go downhill. We had some some advisors come in and say, you guys got to be thinking five and ten years down the road on this. There's no telling what the PGA Tour could look like. One, because of our product, and two, because of their threat. So it is good. You know, quickly, the, um, the threat back in 1994 – of the, the world tour was that the players wanted something different. And we answered the players, gave them something different. We got the world golf championships out of it. We got some smaller fields like at Bay Hill or at, at Tiger's tournament, uh, Jack Nicholas's tournament over the years, because of trying to make changes that, that um, supported the, the front of the bus more um, Jack Nicholas. Arnold Palmer, Tigers tournament have a three-year exemption versus a two-year exemption. We elevated events that the top players always play in to give them more, more status, more money, more FedEx points. And we made changes. And this threat has really put the leadership of the players, direct the player directors and Tiger Woods and, and Roy McIlroy's on our board. It's given them more of a voice. Say, so, hey, you know, maybe if – we need to change for TV. We need to change for our sponsors. We need to change to fight off this threat. Let's all get in a room and talk about it. And that's what we told Greg Norman back then. And what I've told Phil Mickelson for years is if, if a group of players want something to get done, that's we do it all the time on the board. We've had 260-something rules changes under Tim Fincham, and 250-something of them came from player suggestions or from the player advisory council or from the player directors. It's, it's a membership owned run organization. It is a non profit. <laughs> the player directors don't get paid. And Roy McElroy is not making extra money for all the time he spent or Kevin Kisner. Um, and if we decide that the commissioner is doing a poor job, we all get together and vote him out. Um, the board hires the commissioner. The commissioner then hires his staff and their main mission is playing opportunities and charity dollars. You know, that's their only mission. And Tim Bencham one time said, okay, we made $1.5 billion. We had $700 million in expenses. And this is what we got. We can divide it up however you guys want. We can play for it. We can put it in retirement plans. We can bonus it out. We can give starting bonuses however you want. But the best way to do it is for some guys to miss the cut and not get paid. Some guys to win and get paid. That's our model and every one of these tournaments that we build, you know, Davis Love Foundation owns and operates the RSN tournament. I'm responsible financially. The more money I make, the more I give to charity, just like the PGA Tour. And he said, as long as we play for money and guys miss cuts and guys start at the year at zero, 
fans can understand that and get behind it. And it's the most um, most noble, maybe, of all sports. If you don't play well, you just don't get paid. And you can get paid very well. Yes, very well. Yes. <laughs> the 125th guy makes a million dollars in prize money. So if he does spend, you know, three, four, five hundred thousand to travel that year, which is a lot, but he still makes a lot of money. And they did an example. If a rookie comes out now, Davis Love the third made fifty-eight million dollars in comprehensive earnings. Official money, unofficial FedEx retirement. If that young player has Davis Love's career going forward, he would make six hundred and fifteen million dollars. Now, I was at the top, maybe the top end, but obviously Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, a lot of guys had much better careers financially than me. But the potential is to make 200, 300, 400, 5 million in your career. That there's more money than you could ever need. So leaving leaving the PGA Tour to get guaranteed money still is kind of a bad argument because you can make a lot of money and play for history and legacy and tradition just like Tiger always says. Well, I, and that brings up a point that and I mean I'm a journalist so I'm <laughs> <laughs> always going to be middle class and have been fine with that for a long time. But how much money is enough? I don't really get if you have 50 million or 250 million. What's the difference? Do you buy like a third plane or a fifth house? I mean, where I don't even really I can't well, fathom the numbers. We can dive into it sounds pretty, pretty greedy. Dive honestly. into the problems of this world. Yeah. Um, and that's what the Bible has always said. Is that, you know, money is not going to make you happy. Um, but as a kid, I a hundred percent guarantee you no kid that plays on the PGA tour, like Max Homa says, you can't buy my dream. They didn't make a putt for a million dollars or a hundred million dollars or $200 million, or this putt is to get a big deal with Titleist. No, this putts to win the U S open. This putts to win the masters. This putts to win the players championship, to beat Jack Nicholas, to beat Fred couples. It wasn't it. It was never about money. And Rory McIlroy, and I don't, can't quote him, but he said something like, maybe I play better in the FedEx Cup because I'm not playing for money. Hmm. And as the guys, Tiger Woods wasn't playing for money. He had a checklist of goals, and one of them was to beat Davis Love the third right out of the gate, and he beat me in a playoff to get his first win. And one of them was to run down Fred Couples, and one of them was – to eclipse Greg Norman, and one of them was to eclipse Jack Nicholas. Um, he didn't come out here saying, "I'm going to pile up the cash." You know, yeah. that's just a that's just a, an added bene- an added benefit. Yeah, um, sure. My son sees the lifestyle that he's led and that I've led, and he said, "Wow, I'd like to play on the PGA Tour, and make a bunch of money." But he wants to win a PGA tour event like his dad, you know, he wants to win a PGA championship. Like he saw his dad bring home and little Charlie Woods, <laughs> you know, wants to win 150 tournaments. Cause might have, right. might have right. an 82. Um, but that's what Tiger and Rory and the rest of the tour, you know, whatever you want to call us veterans in, in leadership. We just want to provide that for the next kids. We wanted to be there. Tiger wants somebody to play against his records to make them make his records look better. Yeah, right. you know? yeah. um, he, he loves the fact that he, he has accomplished so much, but the tour gave him a platform. So what does he do? He, he builds a foundation. He takes over a tournament. He actually has two or three tournaments that he's, you know, involved in that, that create playing opportunities for, for players. And he he gives as much back as he's taken. Well, this has been a wonderful conversation, Davis. We are so happy that you are the President's Cup captain and coming to Charlotte. And it's just going to be an extraordinary week. I know everyone in Charlotte's really looking forward to it. Uh, Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you again for subscribing and supporting local journalism. Next. I'm Charlie Scott, and I'm the next guest of Sports Legends of the Carolinas. I'm Scott Fowler, and this is Sports Legends of the Carolinas. This show is produced by Jeff Siner and Kata Stevens, and the director of audio at McClatchy is Davin Coburn. For lots more content and to continue supporting this kind of work, please visit charlotteobserver.com slash sportslegends 
and consider a digital subscription. Connect with me on Twitter at Scott underscore Fowler or by email at sfowler at charlotteobserver.com. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you like what you hear, please share with a friend. See you next week.